Welcome to the audio version of the Ramen Bowl Charm Tutorial, made by the Loveless Alchemist at DeviantArt.com. Let's start with materials. First thing in materials that we will look at is the colors of clay you will need. They are listed above, and I will give you a moment to look over and see if you have every color you need. Okay. There are also some other items that you will need listed on the screen. Shaping tools, please keep in mind, can be anything, as long as they produce the effects that you need. There are also some optional items that you can use depending on how you want your charm to look. If you do not want it to be a dollhouse type charm, you will need an eye pin or eye loop along with wire cutters in order to cut them to the right size. If you want to paint a design on your ramen bowl, you will need a fine tip brush or a quill and any choice of paint color that you want that will coincide with the black of the bowl. I prefer gold because it tends to stand out the best. Please make sure that you always have a clean work area. Any sort of dirt, lint, or hair can damage your clay. Also, wash your hands after every major color use. Major color uses are such as the main colors in the color wheel. For some reason in clay, it tends to transfer into hands more than the secondary colors. Now take your red, dark brown, and white clay out. Mix the red and dark brown together in a 1 to 2 red to brown ratio. Then take the red, brown, and white and both roll into snakes. Twist them together several times, mixing them slightly. It should look like this when it's finished. Now roll out some white clay into a very thin sheet. Be careful not to rip it. Then wrap it around your brown and white mixture and roll it out into a thick roll. Now cut that roll into three equal pieces. Give each of the smaller rolls some shape. Make them all different. Now squish them together. Stack them in a triangular pattern and then roll it out into another roll. Now we need to freeze it. Go ahead and put it in your freezer for about five minutes. Now we need to make a bowl. A link is provided in my video comment box to another tutorial on how to make bowls. After made, do not bake it, but put it in the freezer instead. Then remove the snake from the freezer. Make sure it isn't too big in comparison to your bowl. If it is too big, let thaw for two minutes, then re-roll it thinner and refreeze it. If it is the right size, use a razor to cut small pieces off. Make them thin and cut between 3 and 5, then set aside. Now take a little dark green and yellow and mix it together to make a neon green. Roll the neon green into a snake and then roll out some dark green and wrap it around it. Then roll that into a very small snake. It needs to be small enough so you can fit, barely fit a needle through it. Because that is exactly what you're going to do. Cut off a small bit and push your needle into it. When done, stick it in the freezer. Now you take some white and yellow clay out. Roll the white clay out into a snake about two thirds the size of the meat snake you cut and cut a few pieces. No need to freeze this snake because we are now going to give the pieces that you cut an egg shape. When shaped, make small yellow balls and squish them onto the eggs. Two or three should be plenty. When done, set aside. Now take your tan or beige clay and roll it into an extremely thin snake. Cut the snake into four or five equal length pieces and then gently push those pieces together to form a block shape while still remaining flat. Make between three or five of these depending on how thin you rolled your snake. Then give them some shape. Gently use your fingers to twist and curve the blocks differently. Now mix a little red and white clay to make a pink. And roll the pink extremely thin, but be careful not to rip it. 
Do the same for white, except make the white a little bit thicker than the pink. Then trim the pink so it's a little bit smaller on every side and place it in the middle of the white sheet. And then roll it around. Now take your scrap piece of clay and pinch off a small ball of it. Then go and get your bowl out of the freezer and place a scrap ball on the bottom of your bowl. Use your finger to push down on it to mesh it, but keep the edges rounded. You can use a tool to help if needed. Then get your noodle blocks that you made and wrap them around that ball. Don't let the edges poke out and be rough. Wrap them around in all different directions until you have them all completely wrapped in. Lunch time! Num, 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 num. Now take some dark brown pastel chalk and scrape a little pollen to your work area. Use your soft brush to brush it onto your little meat slices that you had set aside. Cover them completely. Now scrape a little light or dark brown pastel chalk into either of the following. Either a small container, corner of a Ziploc bag, or on a scrap piece of foil. Use the toothpick to mix in some translucent liquid Sculpey into the powder at a 3 to 1 ratio. Mix well until fully blended. Take the bowl from the freezer and insert the eyepiece or loop if you desire it. And either use a toothpick to scoop the translucent liquid Sculpey powder mixture into the bowl or cut the corner from the bag you used. Get all the way around the noodles and slightly on the top of the noodles. When finished, begin arranging the meat and egg slices how you would like in the bowl. Be careful to still leave room to see the noodles and for the rest of the stuff we still need to add. Now take your clay covered noodle out of the freezer and pull off some of the clay. You need to work very quickly here or it will thaw and you need to start this whole part over. Cut extremely thin slices off the clay and use your needle tip tool or tweezers to put them on your noodles in the bowl. Now take your pink and white snake out of the freezer and then cut off a few very thin pieces. Then use your needle tip tool to make small indents around the outer edge of each piece. When done, arrange them in your bowl. You're almost done. All you need to do now is bake according to the instructions of whatever brand you used. If you want to paint a design, let it cool after baking and have at it. You may also choose to glaze it, however I believe it diminishes the detail so I don't recommend it. <laughs>